Okay, we are really coming down to it. The last part of this before <clears throat> making a completely functional application is storing the consent agreement that we have. So I'm gonna open up terminal here. Hopefully it still fits in the same kind of window. Yeah, it looks like we're good. Uh, and we're gonna use the uh, AWS mobile hub uh, command line tools here. So we're gonna AWS mobile and then it is database configure. Uh, okay, so AWS mobile, actually I think it is. Let me, um, before I go through all this song and dance, I think we have a mobile. Okay, we do, we just haven't, okay, we, okay, okay, so, we do AWS mobile database enable. Okay. And then we're going to do configure. We're going to create a new table and it's going to be open. And we're going to call it consents. And then we're going to have uh, a column called um, requester. No, oh, hold on. I've got to pause this. I've got a call coming in. Okay, so uh, back to the column names. We're going to name this requester device ID. And it's going to be a string. We're going to add another column. Yeah, yes. We call this uh, grantor device ID. It's going to be a string. And we're going to add another column. Call it created at. And normally it's going to be a date, but we have to store it as a string in DynamoDB. So we're going to pick string. That's all the columns we're gonna create and then select the primary index, which is going to be the uh, grantor device ID. Yes, grantor device ID. Just trying to think here. That should be fine. And then the sort key is created at. Then we're going to add an index. <laughs> uh, I don't know why it bailed out on that one, but uh, let's configure it again. Uh, edit table from the project. Sense. Uh, add indexes. And we're going to call this uh, requester. device ID created at. And the partition key is going to be the requester device ID and the sort key is gonna be created at. And we're gonna add the index. And then we should have the table. So now we have to create an API for it. So we're going to uh, go cloud API configure. Okay, so we have to enable it first. Okay, and we'll configure it. Uh, and we're gonna create a CRUD API from an existing DynamoDB table. And we're gonna pick consents. Uh, okay, so, okay. Then, so what that did was that created an API, which we can see uh, here, Cloud API consents, and it's back here. So that's what that is. Um, and then if we uh, look there, we 
have app, which then has our uh, our API methods in there. Right. Um, so now we have to implement this API. So what we're going to do is I'm going to look here. I'm going to go to a different project that we have existing. Um, and this is not the project I want. Uh, let me close that. This is the project I think I want. And so this is a much larger project and we're going to be using uh, this has epics and all kinds of fun stuff that we won't be getting into, but um, let's see, what's one we want to create user, or wait, create, should I is a good one. So the kind of what we're gonna be looking at is API post here, so we have to import API. So we're gonna go back up here, and again, yes, we're, cr we're cramming everything in app.js. We will refactor it at another time um, right now we're just trying to get all done here. So then we need to API post. So basically when we want to find here, when it, when it reads the data, what we want to do is API post to consents crud. And the path is this and the body going to be something like uh, requests uh, requester device ID um, grant grantor device ID and created at blah blah so what we're gonna go over here is uh, okay so we have Create that is this. Uh, create that's going to be this. And uh, the requester, the grantor device, uh, device ID is going to be e dot data. It's going to be what we read in from the uh, the QR code. And then requester device ID. That is the device ID of this. So we're going to use this right here. And that should actually do it. We're going to say then uh, data and we're going to set state uh, and we're going to catch console.log just so we can see any errors that come up. I think that should do it. Just trying to think if I can think of anything else that I've forgotten. I will have to uh, end this screencast in order to get my app up and running on my phone. So I'll probably cut this one short like right now, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we need to do. Oh, there is one other thing we need to do. So we actually need to uh, AWS mobile push. We need to push our new code up to Mobile Hub. And what we're doing right now is when we did all that uh, AWS mobile configure, all we're really doing when we do that is creating a YAML file and editing a YAML file. And then we do AWS mobile hub or AWS mobile push. We're pushing that YAML file up to mobile hub 
which will then extract the content of that YAML file and create the resources from that YAML file. They, the database, the tables, uh, the Lambda functions, the, the API gateway endpoints, it'll create all that from that YAML file. But until we actually push it up there, uh, we're, not, we're not using anything. Until we actually push it up there, we're not, um, uh, we, don't have, we don't have anything actually running up there. I'm going to pause this because it could take a while and I don't want to waste your time waiting for this to finish, but I'll unpause it as soon as it's finished. Okay, so there we have it. Now, if we go to the back end now of our mobile hub, we should see an application in there, React Native. The back end, uh, we can go check out the, uh, we see it created our consents table. Um, there's zero items in it right now. Uh, and then we also created our Cloud API, which is right here. Consents CRUD that we were talking about. So we should be ready to test it out. Like I said, um, I'm going to have to disconnect in order to, uh, or end the screencast in order to get the app uh, booted up on my phone again. So I'll end this here and boot it back up in a second.